projectile motion. Assumption, what? Two-dimensional motion, not three-dimensional, in our discussion. Two, air has no effect on the motion of the projection. It's not true, but we ideal situation, we, we think air has no effect on the motion of the projectile. During its two-dimensional motion, the projectile position vector r and the velocity vector r changes continuously. But its acceleration vector g is constant and always directed vertically downward. How is the vertical motion of a falling ball affected by its horizontal motion? We'll use this device to find out. If a ball is loaded onto the back and the trigger is pulled, the ball falls straight down. If another ball is loaded on the front and the trigger is pulled, the ball both flies horizontally and falls vertically. But how do the vertical accelerations of these two falling balls compare? If we drop one ball vertically at the same time we fire the other horizontally, which will strike the ground first? They both strike at the same time. The vertical acceleration of a falling ball is unaffected by its horizontal motion. The horizontal motion and the vertical motion are independent of each other. That is, neither motion affects the other. We look at this one. Okay. They falling on the ground, they touch the ground at the same time. That means the vertical motion are not affected by the vert horizontal motion. Uh, horizontal motion. This one is no ve horizontal velocity. This one is with some horizontal velocity. But they are connected with each other through so time t. We look at this projectile motion. We know the velocity, the acceleration g is always stopped towards the world. And horizontally, you don't have any force. Okay. So the horizontal component of velocity is constant always constant and vertically you have acceleration downward so this is a free fall okay, acceleration constant acceleration so get velocity goes slow slow zero and you turn around get big and big and big okay. so each time the velocity is a combination combined of horizontal and vertical horizontal and vertical okay we know the free fall acceleration movement very carefully. So horizontal is uniform motion. Vx equal to original Vx zero. It's called a V cosine theta zero. This is projectile angle theta zero. And vertically, vertically is a free fall acceleration with the initial velocity v zero y v zero y equal to v zero sine theta zero okay project time motion analyzed okay. we know horizontally is a constant x movement with v zero x v zero cosine theta zero always that magnitude and vertically is initial V zero y is V zero sine theta is free for acceleration. So this is an always uniform velocity. V x minus x zero, the displacement in x direction is V t, because V is V zero cosine zero t. And y is free for acceleration. So the displacement y minus y zero equal to 
zero v zero y t minus because g is go down and our reference y is up in this case minus g t squared and v o y is v o sine theta o that's it ah that's the one now we like this one t equal to x minus x zero over v zero cosine theta we put the t into this one okay plug this into one so they get y minus y zero equal to v zero t t is x minus x zero over v zero cosine zero and you see this one you have sine theta zero v zero and this one you have v zero so v zero cancel out sine theta of a course are tangent it become tangent theta x minus six okay and you have half g t squared the t equal to x minus x zero v zero x and c this is the one project time okay now we usually take x equal to zero and y equal to zero as orange of the reference frame okay when we take this one zero we get y equal to tan theta x minus half g okay this x squared v zero square cosine theta squared the function is y is a function of x as a x square so we know this is a, a parabola a parabola okay that's projectile motion okay now we introduce range range is you projectile and you at the same level it reaches this distance called the range uh, usually from horizontal uh, sea level to sea level or the, from ground to ground right yeah what of the physics for the physics y minus y zero is zero in this case you get r from here we get time t uh, y minus y zero we get time t okay we put in t into this one you get the range so this one you make it a zero you get a t you put in here it was a two sine theta zero cosine theta zero is sine two theta zero v zero v zero v zero square so with the range is a v zero square over g sine two theta this is a range so range r is a function of theta zero and we can tell when theta equal to 45 degree sin v0 equal to maximum range the horizontal range r is maximum for launch of angle of 45 degree of course with the same velocity v0 this brass tube points directly at a plastic bottle hanging from an electromagnet if we put a wooden dowel in the tube and blow into the tube, the dowel is fired straight at the hanging bottle. But as the dowel flies out of the tube, it knocks off a piece of aluminum foil carrying current to the electromagnet. The electromagnet shuts off and the bottle begins to fall just as the dowel flies out of the tube. Even though the bottle is no longer in the spot in which the dowel was aimed, the dowel still strikes the bottle. Here is a repeat with the dowel fired at a lower speed. These dots will track the positions of the dowel and the bottle at one tenth of a second intervals as the last sequence is repeated. In this demonstration, a small car will roll down a track at constant speed. When the car reaches this point, it will fire a ball straight up as it continues to move. After the ball is fired, will it come down ahead of, on top of, or behind the car? It comes down onto the car. This shot in stop motion 
shows that the ball stays directly above the car at all times. What will the shape of the ball's path be through the air? The ball flies in a parabola, the combination of constant horizontal velocity and constant vertical acceleration produces a parabolic path. At what angle should a ball be launched in order to fly the greatest distance before striking the ground? This spring-loaded gun can launch small wooden balls at different angles with the same speed. As we shoot each ball, we will track its position with a line on the screen, using a different color for each angle of firing. The effect of the air. We have assumed that the air through which the projectile moves has no effect on its motion. A reasonably assumption at low speeds. However, for greater speed, the disagreement between our calculation and the actual motion of the projectile can be large because the air resists or opposes the motion. Well, like this, we have a V0 projectile a subject with an angle, in it angle 60 degree. From our calculation, okay, this speed is 44.7 meter per second. You should have range 177 meter. But in that environment of, of this air resistance, actually it only reached 98 meter. By theory, it should the height get height 76.8 meter. Actually, it has only reached 53.1 meter. By calculation, it should last 7.9 seconds in the air, but actually, after 6.6 .6 seconds, it touched the ground. No problem in physics can be solved exactly. It is always necessary to make approximation in solving problems. The trick is to divide the problem into two parts. Simple parts to find the exact solution. Small part to do your best. Or small enough to be neglected. Sample. In a figure, a rescue plane flies at 198 km per hour at a constant elevation of 500 meter towards a point. Direct of a boating accident victim struggling in the water. This is the point. The pilot wants to release a rescue capsule so that it hits the water very close to the victim. After the, the, the rescue captor leave the, the plane, it is a project time. Okay, project time. Now, look, sister, question A. What should be the angle phi of the pilot's line of sight to the victim? And this pilot's line phi. When release is made. So the, the capsule rescue. A capital will reach around him, around this area. Question B. As the capsule reaches the water, what is its velocity? V in unit vector notation and as a magnitude and as an angle. Now, in order to find a phi, we know this is a constant 500 meter. 
if we can find the range, another exact range, okay, that the horizontal displacement, and then 10 in the 5 equal to this over h, we can get a 5. And this is one equal to time, this distance, the time multiplied by the velocity, 50.5 meters per second. Okay. How much time it hit one? We can from the vertical, let's see. That's a strategy. Okay. Why minus y zero? Y is here. Y zero here is minus 500 equal to V zero T minus T. From here, we can find the T because this is minus 500. Y is going up. So this is zero. This is minus 500. This is minus 500. This is zero. Okay. Ah, from here, V zero, we have 55.0 meter per second. Theta zero is zero because horizontal, horizontal. So in this case, I can find the T. Okay, T equal to about 10 to the point one second. Once you have a T, we know velocity, this is equal to X equal to V zero cos it is is zero T. So this is, a, we get this one, 500, 556 meter. Ah. Okay, we take this a reference, oh, this is X zero is zero. So the x equal to 555.5. Five, five, five five. And then the 10 in the 5 equal to 555 five, five over 500 equal to. So we get a 5, 48 degree. Question B. What the f speed when he read the water? The speed has two components. Horizontal, this is 55.0 always. Vertical, let me calculate. Okay, we get a T, it started from zero, so this is one is very simple. This is a V0 sin theta minus GT. This is a zero, okay. G9.8, 10 is, T is 10.1, so we get minus 99.0. This is a downward. This is a horizontal. So V equal to VX I minus vj, vyj, the magnitude equal to vx square plus vy square square root. We put this number inside, okay, with x113. And this phi is tangent vy over vx, always y to x, we get theta, okay, this angle is minus 61. So, you see, vy is negative number, go this way. Vx is positive, so this is the direction of V. Okay, this is minus 61. 